Hello to everybody. Uh, my name is Ruben Sacerdoti. I'm the international director of the Emilia Romagna Regional Government. Uh, this is Bologna, capital city. Uh, as you can see, this is one of the oldest towns uh, in Europe, uh, with one of the oldest universities all over the world. And in fact, uh, our identity now is how to preserve uh, history, how to preserve the towns, and at the same time to move towards innovation, R&D, and a different uh, 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 configuration of, of services and uh, industrial bases in Italy, in our town. Uh, this area of, uh, of Italy is a concentration of uh, manufacturing firms. We have here in Emilia Romagna something like 43,000 companies active mainly in the manufacturing sector, uh, mechanical, food, uh, agricultural uh, transformation, um, ceramic tiles, uh, uh, wellness, health services, and so on. Uh, so the effort is to uh, identify a way, a path, through innovation, towards innovation, and at the same time to preserve the beauty, to preserve the well-being and the typical Italian lifestyle. So what we are doing um, together, uh, first of all, we are um, grouping people. We are grouping uh, the regional government, uh, the, the municipalities, uh, industrial uh, uh, members, uh, entrepreneurs, universities, students, everybody together uh, to try to, uh, to uh, create a, a unique identity, unique idea, and to work together. And what we are doing now, maybe the next slide, please, is to make the biggest investment uh, in innovation that is going on at the moment in Italy. So this is the creation of a big data and artificial intelligence uh, technopole. It will be a European uh, technopole for big data. We have, at the moment, in Bologna, the uh, highest uh, uh, supercomputing capacity all over Europe, till at the moment. And we are trying to put all this supercomputing capacity and to provide services for citizens, municipalities, governments, uh, companies, uh, hospitals, uh, cities. And so to, you know that now, today, data are the real oil, petroleum for, for business. So everything that will happen in the next five, ten years it will be based on uh, data availability and data ca and the capacity of uh, manipulating this data. So we are concentrating here. This is a, uh, these are 120,000 square meters. That means 12 football fields. Uh, just to give you an idea, this is an ancient uh, um, industrial area. Uh, here we were used to produce cigarettes. It's a tobacco, former tobacco company. Uh, maybe the Italian no, remember MS uh, cigarettes. And so this is a very important big place uh, with ancient building because it's a, a, the, uh, the, this building where uh, built in 1912, so the, the, the very early of the, the, the previous uh, century. And now they will be transforming, transforming a big data technopole. What does this mean for an old city to have uh, 20 minutes by foot from the center of the town such a big investment? This is a uh, discussion that I would like to present to you. And of course for real estate, uh, companies, this is a very interesting thing to, to deal because th there are some spaces that are available for investors and then we have to provide all, all around this big uh, infrastructure, we have to provide services for uh, people that will work here, live here and maybe would like also to amuse themselves and to have some entertainment. Okay, good, and we'll dig that. That introduces quite a lot of the themes that we'll pick up as well in the discussion. Um, so, uh, Maria, just um, just coming to you, just quickly introduce yourself, and I think you've also got a slide that just demonstrates one of the projects that you're working on. Okay, 
Uh, my name is uh, Maria Silva, I'm a civil engineer. I'm in uh, the last 50 years, I developed 3 million square meters in Italy. And uh, this is uh, the project uh, in Genoa. Uh, it's uh, the biggest uh, science park in Italy now. It's very close to the airport, uh, 10 minutes from the center and close to the motorway. It's a four um, uh, um, 100,000 meters square to development, uh, dedicated to research, dedicated uh, to co-working space, uh, housing, uh, uh, the biggest uh, hospital in uh, Genova. This is very important uh, um, uh, project for non, not only for Genova but uh, for uh, Italy. Uh, before this uh, place uh, is uh, used for industrial space, so is a very important example. In, for smart city and sustainability because the 50% of the project is used for green space and sport space. This is the project we would like to explain about the innovation in this panel. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, Leanne. Um, hi, I'm Leanne Tritton. I'm from uh, Ing Media. I, I don't have a slide, um, but basically uh, we're a PR and communications agency and we do all of the, the PR for MIPM, as well as many other developers, architects and operators in the built environment. And I think where we're coming from is we're fascinated with the, the way in which communications helps uh, the work that you're doing. So what, what we're, we have done is looked at digital overlay. So how, how is the work that you're doing being reflected in the digital world? Because what we find is uh, a lot of the um, practitioners in uh, the built environment or in real estate really understand investment but don't understand how people are perceiving their brands, their cities as brands. So we all get that people People are buying brands via digital communications, but few people are understanding how cities are being bought. So all the work that you're doing on, on innovation and uh, what you're doing in Bologna is fascinating, but how is that ranking in terms of digital comms? So we've done a sort of initial survey, um, sorry, this is my ad, um, about the most talked about cities in Europe. And we're looking at partners here in MIPM to do more extensive research on how digital comms is, uh, is helping cities, you know, really leap beyond their ranking systems of where they are now. Okay, great. Harry. Uh, yes, okay. So um, I think first and foremost, I'm an architect. Um, I suppose we as a practice are your creative collection we are um, we're a distributed network i suppose of urban innovators there's 580 of us across 17 studios around the world um, i've had the privilege of living and working in shanghai for the last eight years and i've just recently moved back to the uk um, and really just sharing some of the interesting ideas and innovations that i've seen happening across the world i've worked in uh, the retail mixed use sectors um, creating different environments for shopping malls and high-rise uh, workplace, and then most recently in the education sector as well, delivering um, tech incubators for the University of Nottingham in Ningbo, uh, and um, and some very 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 large school projects in in China and across uh, Asia. Um, so I suppose having to see how that integrates into a, a European context now, and I think it could help solve some of the many problems that we're facing in town centres and other parts of regeneration. And I'm here with a colleague who's looking at that specific issue from an urban design perspective. Um, so we're looking at everything from um, the macro scale, big city infrastructure, right way through to products and branded identities and then fusing all of those things together. So I think one thing that we pride ourselves on is, is creating sort of uh, teams of people, specialists that can put together identities for uh, unique opportunities around the world. Okay, good. And Thomas, it may just be useful for people to know your background because you've been tracking the sustainability part for quite a long time in terms of cities. Yeah, definitely. I think when it starts, let's say, 10 years ago, when we all, this is not an advertising story, this one, this one, that one, called smartphone. Um, this was the end of geography. We all fear about digitization, which means uh, there is no, it's, it's a footloose, footloose industry. We can work wherever you want, live wherever you want. Wherever. 10 years later, it's the total difference. We get more densified in city centers, we get sitting closer, we are living closer in these micro-living things. So this again to translate this, and this again where, I like the picture of Bologna, to be honest. It shows uh, 
evolution 500 plus years ago converted in our challenge today, which means how can we bring these innovatives on a limited number of square meter together, maybe on a high-rise level, I don't know, not in Bologna maybe in that case. On the other hand, reality, and this is again where uh, we saw it in Genova, and, and the other example is that the edge of city form industrialized soon will obviously become the most, uh, let's say, focus for investors, for all of us, um, that we don't build the uh, Mercado in, uh, in, in Bologna with all our properties, no doubt. So urbanization, we've already mentioned, one of the biggest themes um, across the world. Cities also increasingly competing with one another. Um, uh, and in the session this morning, we were talking about how those cities try to um, attract capital, how wellness, how um, walkability, how issues like that are becoming far more important. Um, what's your sense of the role of innovation with you as a designer when you're and an architect when you're looking at these city plans particularly um, what's your view in terms of innovation and how that's influencing it well i suppose um, in short it's critical really i mean having um, an innovative approach to what makes um, a city unique is critical to making sure that you attract the right human capital uh, we talked about getting the right sort of people the right mix of people uh, into cities and towns um, and I think you know we're engaged in a piece of work called Streets for All at the moment which looks at how you can create livable walkable healthy streets um, and, and the spaces between buildings uh, especially in existing pieces of infrastructure are these heritage cities that we all live and work in now how can we make meaningful impressions on those streetscapes uh, make them safe make them livable um, cyclable as well um, and we're, we're having to talk to local authorities and private development groups and get them to work together in partnership um, to, to, and, that, and that I think innovation is bred by that partnership creating those conversations we're involved in a lot of stakeholder conversations so what we're doing really is urban designers and architects is steering that crowd-funded uh, idea of human capital and making sure that we're giving people what they want and just injecting that right level of just okay have you what about this example from Hong Kong for example where they may look at high-rise schools it's completely, completely different but I think that might become a trend when you're starting to put different sort of types of models into streetscapes that don't exist in the UK or Europe at the moment for example so we just prompt people with an idea and see what sticks and I'll come back to you in a, in a little bit about the, your experience of China because mm. you've been there and I think that's, that's fascinating to see how different regions are dealing with some of the same challenges in different ways. Um, I'm interested to pick up with you, Ruben, as well, that, that you mentioned in your initial discussion there about uh, the, the fact that it being 15 to 20 minutes walk um, for that new center was an important part of that. Was that critical to your decision making, that sort of idea of walkability, closeness, the ability to, for people to be able to include it in their daily lives without necessarily transportation? Yeah, th th this is a crucial point of, uh, for every decision maker, I, I think, because uh, traffic is uh, really uh, non-affordable at that moment in Italy. And you know, as how uh, investment on infrastructures are really difficult. Uh, maybe you have er uh, heard something about uh, the high speedness train between Italy and France, how it's difficult to, to achieve even when plans are okay, budget is okay, uh, governments are in partnership. So if you uh, are able to reshape the urban planning without uh, um, the necessity of expanding the transportation system, this is fantastic and you, you can work uh, uh, faster and better in that way. And for our, for our region, Emilia-Romagna is a sort of, uh, uh, there are hundreds of small towns uh, uh, all along the ancient Emilia road, Emilia way. And so th this is quite easier for us to, to try to planning everything uh, without uh, uh, big effort in this sense. We have uh, decided 10 years ago, in any case, to invest in the high-speed train. Now, from Bologna, you can reach Milan in one hour, uh, Florence in 45 minutes, uh, Rome in two hours, less than two hours. So in any case, you are in a, in a, in a heart of a hub 
uh, logistic hub of Italy. Uh, there is an international airport uh, six kilometers from the uh, big data technopole. But at the same time, you can live and uh, um, work in, in, inside the urban area. Um, so reaching restaurant bars and swimming pool, everything in a, in a very short, uh, um, uh, without spending time. Uh, bicycle is, of course, at the center of the uh, revitalization of the transportation. Uh, we have, of course, e-bike uh, system, e-bike uh, organization. And uh, at the same time, what we reached a uh, couple of years ago was a new law from the regional government called zero consumption law. So we cannot, uh, co uh, consumption of new area of land are not uh, available, are not uh, possible. So we have to renovate everything. Uh, for this reason, everybody is looking at uh, ancient industrial, uh, former industrial uh, area, uh, area where uh, also near bridges or near big roads, uh, everything is now uh, in a new way of, uh, uh, of becoming something, something better. And also the um, in co-working facilities, uh, incubator centers, everything is inside the town and everything is starting from the ancient and uh, is, is, is passing a new, a new uh, re renovation. And for, to do this, uh, digitalization is f fundamental. So you have to digitalize everything. At the moment, in Emilia Romagna, we have uh, e-health. So there is um, a completely digitalized uh, uh, health system. Uh, you have a card, you can go everywhere uh, in the region and uh, everybody knows your, your situation, your health record. Um, we are really moving with, with a, a digital library, for example, all the libraries of the region are digitalized and you can enter, you can access the old books through your card. Uh, you have only one card for the bus, train and bus system, so you can move uh, using different in integration of the uh, transportation, everything is in the same, the same card and so on. So. Uh, with this big investment in, in the Technopole, I think in, uh, in 10 years we can completely change and completely modernize one of the ancient towns in Italy. Okay, good. Um, and Maria, you mentioned in yours, and, and I saw rather from the slide, just in terms of the, um, where you've got innovation at the heart of that project, you've also got infrastructure in terms of that the airport is close by, that there is a main arterial road coming in, that you're also 15 minutes away um, from the city centre. To attract the sort of innovative companies, the tech companies that you want in order to drive that development, how important is that kind of infrastructure being in place, the ability to, for people to be able to get there easily, um, to be able to work? So the infrastructure is very important. For this reason, Genova, after Milan, in the next uh, 10 uh, years, is uh, involved in many projects of infrastructure and uh, uh, real estate development because we need to connect uh, to uh, Genova to Milan in uh, 35 minutes uh, by uh, um, high speed uh, velocity. But in my opinion, it's very important also the alternative transport. We uh, introduced in our project carpooling and uh, car sharing. Uh, we have uh, now 2,000 people we work in our project and 30% uh, of these people uh, use uh, carpooling and car sharing. This is very important because uh, innovation is uh, not only technology but in my opinion is uh, um, uh, also community and service. For to have a smart city and a connect city, you need to have a smart people before. So uh, what is important is the transport, but is a long way the, uh, Italy needed to work very hard for, uh, for this point. But also it's important to work for create a new community open for, for change the um, model of life and model of work. I think to um, work uh, at home, uh, I think uh, co-living uh, in, uh, in Italy is not use so much uh, this, uh, this side, but uh, I uh, imagine that will be increased more and more in the, in the future. 
OK, good. Um, I wanted to pick up with you, Leanne. I'll come back to that in a second. I wanted to pick up with you, Leanne, just in terms of you mentioned the research that you've done. Can you maybe share some of the results of that and what that says about which are winning cities and, and, uh, and, and just, just how, you, how you view that? Because I'll be interested if it's different to, the, to the, the traditional investment view. OK, so what we did is uh, we took um, 40 cities that are always um, uh, come up on the key indice rankings, and there's a whole range of them. It's too, too many to, uh, to detail here. But uh, we took those cities and, and rated them. And then what we did is we matched them based on their digital profile. And what we found is some of the, the most uh, um, uh, uh, sort of talked about uh, um, or recognized cities in terms of investment have, have much lower digital footprints. So the amount of effort that's going into the investment story is not being matched in managing the digital brand. Uh, so, but there are some uh, cities like Leon for example, that is punching well above its weight. So it's not, uh, it's not um, up in the top 10 cities, but in terms of digital profile, it's doing incredibly well. And they're doing that through all sorts of different... Uh, it's, it's not only sort of news flow, but also obviously the cultural infrastructure that they have, the events that they have. And, and we're not just talking just about social media here. We're talking about the whole digital footprint. So I, I'm learning so much from you guys today because the complexity of what you're trying to communicate is massive. You're trying to show people that you've got all of the, you know, you've sorted massive infrastructure, but also it's a lovely place to live and you've got nice restaurants. Well, that's a very complex uh, messaging tool. And I would, I would guess, and this is not to put you on the spot, but I would guess that you don't have your comms teams within, say, government or within cities who are focused on that in a holistic way. Um, and I'm, uh, we don't have all of the, all of the answers, but we're very fascinated, and we're working with someone who work, uh, is from the London School of Economics on how do we measure all of these things. And it's it's a very complex area, but uh, we're hoping to uh, roll it out over the next five years to just keep building on the knowledge we have. And uh, can I j just for somebody who's as old as me and you're not, Harry? So uh, you can forgive me for that. Um, what do you mean by saying a digital footprint? Just, just for those who also may not understand that, just, just, just what does that mean in terms of, does it mean how often the city comes up on Twitter? Does it mean how often, what, what do you mean by a digital footprint? We mean all of that. So how often it comes up on social media, how often it comes up in news. So uh, uh, we use a tool which measures all of this um, and, it's, and it's, it, it's not subjective. So for example, you can get some cities that get a spike because they've had a disaster, um, but generally what we've done with the data is measure that across a 12-month period so that that evens out. Um, but it's, it's all digital uh, platforms. So this is not a tool to measure social media. I want to make that absolutely uh, clear. Um, and it's also the investment story. It's things like infrastructure, how they're reported. Um, and what we're finding also is cities aren't actually managing that brand. So it's broken up into many, many bits. Um, and, and we believe that the way forward for leading cities is to have people managing the overall brand. Just as, you know, you remember New York back in the 70s. What did they do to pull themselves out of their position? They, they, they did a, a brand campaign. And so cities should be looking at what they're doing on their digital brand campaigns. And they picked that all up from Bologna, I'm pretty certain, New York. Yeah. Harry, yes. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think you'd ever underestimate the, uh, the value of a branded urban identity. I mean, just, and, it, and it, it's not sort of just what you would historically think as a branded cityscape or something, you know, it's sort of that, the iconic skyline or something like that. I mean, you, you, you could, we, we, we faced the same sort of issues when we were looking at projects in China, for example. You know, how do you make the, these, these cities that are you know, vast, they're huge, but they're all kind of the same? A little bit like the clone town problem we're facing in the UK at the moment, and I think that's probably similar across sort of a lot of European towns and cities as well. These branded urban environments, that it's in the sort of social media and, uh, and and digital sphere. It's something different. It's quite interesting how people uh, still rely on physically moving around to describe how they feel in a place. And it's not that virtual connectivity where we all thought like so, so ten years ago we'd all be sat in one spot just you know, sort of video conferencing each other and wouldn't be moving around. But actually everyone's talking about getting up, getting on trains, biking around, staying healthy. 
So that becomes part of that conversation. So the branded urban identity isn't what you would maybe commonly perceive as a branded urban environment. It's, it's, it's definitely something underlying and it's, it, it's about how people feel in a place. How can you capture that visually and represent it and then sell it is something that I think we need to innovate on. Okay, good. Thomas. Let me just give one, one comment which sounds a little bit contradictory to what we all say. We all believe in digitalization and all this pretty shining world, no doubt. Full stop. I hope we survive the 40 MIPIM due to one main thing. Wherever we go, wherever I go, we have a big, big resistance uh, from locals um, called affordable, affordable housing mainly. This again, what is a, a unique thing globally, wherever you go, same thing, um, which means we also should think on our cluster thinking, Genova, Bologna, wherever, how can we achieve this dominant factor called affordable? Whatever affordable means, I have no definition what affordable in Milano versus Stockholm versus London, different. But this again, where we, sh we, should, we should think also on not just that funky young generation who lives co-working, co-living, but also on the rest, and the rest maybe it's the 80%. And so this is again where it's crucial to think also about that innovative hubs, it means also you have to be something affordable um, in the whole context. Okay, good, and you're also, Thomas, as well as, uh, you know, Catella as well as being a brokerage and doing advisory is also an investor. Um, so from that position, how do you see the investment side? Do you think the investment side is actually on board with all of this? Um, or do you think it's a trend that the investment side will have to catch up with? Are they looking at different parameters for what makes an interesting, successful smart city? Well, honestly speaking, uh, just let's dig a little bit deeper, which means investors, um, I mentioned this in the presentation, investors are happy if they find comparables to their own investment, which means these are the totally same kind of architecture in the city centers globally, whether it's benchmarks, Shanghai, Canary Wharf, wherever this is one. And on the other hand, uh, I see a change in investors' behavior of understand how a city really works connectivity, digitization, um, smart people, young and old people. So this is again where they see it's not just the financing case with a lot of money in the background. It's more to understand the DNA, what is the city in the next 20 to 45 years. On the other hand, basically speaking, I love the data center because this, the, this is the spider in the web of our investments. It's not a pretty shining thing. Wherever you go, it's ugly. But it, it's, the, it's the kind of the blood for our whole business industry. So we have to not think in just the pretty shining super brands globally, but also on this workable infrastructure. And this is the big shift for me, coming back more on the short-term view of investment, which is topic for MIPIM, but also think or one or two decades further, and not just say it will be all happy in the next 20 years, everybody rent that, blah, blah, blah. This is not what we understand as investors and an advisor uh, on a property who have a long time life cycle. And it's a, interesting, we had, um, so David from WeWork um, was on the panel we, we had this morning as well, talking about how they look at successful cities and that actually they're being driven in terms of their, their view on where they're going to invest next, much more on what they would call their members. Um, and they're really following their customers, their members to a certain extent, in where do you think is the next interesting place? Where are you beginning to do more meetings? Um, where should we be looking at different space? Um, and that's quite interesting because that was, that's being driven them from a very different perspective um, to the investors at the moment, for sure. Give it, give, maybe just one, one thing. <laughs> I think it was totally shocked last week by announcing the case of Amazon in Queens, New York. I think nobody expects this. And so what's going on there? On one hand, this is a typical funk sector company, big famous one. And other one, of them, the locals are totally resistant on that. Sorry for that. Just, but it this gives an indication what innovation does mean. It's not just meaning that um, Amazon conquers the whole city. Let's say this. Sorry. But I, I completely agree. And I think that where this shows in terms of your comment about WeWork looking for cities, cities have a huge opportunity to jump ahead of the ratings by controlling their brand in, in a much more stringent, not so much stringent way, but a coordinated way. So if you do have amazing bike schemes or whatever, I'm sure that you, know, you should be making sure that they're, they're factored in. So when people are looking, so, so it's not just WeWork, but all sorts of companies are coming along and saying, where do I put my new headquarters? And they're looking at where younger people want to go 
but, but it's disparate, isn't it? Uh, the com commentary is disparate. So really the opportunity exists for smaller cities to really jump ahead of the rankings. That's what we feel. So let's just do one quick round of um, what do we think are going to be the big key trends? Um, so you can select one. Let's start with you, Thomas. Um, the big trend in terms of urban development. Affordable housing due to one main reason, half of the innovative young generation, they don't live in the outskirts like you and me, buy a house, die by a mortgage. Uh, they are the potential renter generation, rental generation for the next 20 years. And then maybe with the 50 plus, they will build a house in the outskirts, but not the next 20 years. Okay, good. Harry? Um, probably driving densities up around transport nodes and transport infrastructure. I think we're all identifying uh, rail networks and different types of uh, moving people around networks, where that ends up with autonomous electric vehicles in the near future. We don't know, but um, I think you know, the nature of mixed use, and we mentioned it before, how that then supports different types of densities in those areas to create different kind of cultural groupings. That, 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 that's going to be a completely different. We, we, we microcosms, villages within urban environments, almost, but super dense. Okay, um, good, Leanne. How cities communicate. Okay. Um, affordable housing too, and uh, also uh, healthcare, because uh, hospitality is very important, uh, and uh, people uh, in Italy need uh, some new project uh, and new cart dedicated. Uh, Italy sometimes is quite different from other places. And I think aging will transform completely the way to build and the way to plan the cities. At the moment, Emilia Romagna is the oldest region in Italy. That is the second oldest country all over the world after Japan. So I think to, uh, the idea to put together innovation and aging, uh, combine them and uh, make space also for young people, this is a, something very how, interesting. For how us. to finance it might be the yeah, biggest issue. Is, yeah. <laughs> this is a problem. Good. And we need investors for that. Thank you. <laughs> Good. 